How are you doing out there? Talking shit, that's right. The, the, the OG that kind of got everything started uh, with the uh, the whole silliness. Today, what I'm going to talk about is a couple of things. I'm going to talk about securing the bag. That's right. I was able to purchase a 2013. I know I said I wanted a 2014, but luckily, a lot of you guys sent me a bunch of literature that stated that I can make the case that the 13 and 14 are exactly identical in terms of safety layout. So if there is any NHRA silliness with a cage uh there is a process where i can pretty much make the case that the 13 is identical to the 14 so it's just a year overlap that the nhra didn't take into account specifically with ford mustangs as long as you prove that the safety mechanisms the safety measures the safety features on that mustang is good we won't talk much about the car until i get it here i want to make sure that i get it here and everything looks good also we're going to talk about shops shops are now not now but what they're doing is something I don't like, especially if you're like a new customer. You're, you're seeing shops promote, hey, we do this, we do that, we install this old pump gear, we install this cam, we install this and this and that, come up, hit us up for any of your Coyote power needs. And the parts that they're showing are fucking junk. Like they're, they're known to be certifiable junk and... I can't go out there on the post and be like, hey, don't be out there talking, you know, don't sell them junk. I just use this show and go, please, shops, stop selling these people junk. And then we'll talk about the LRX literally attracting brand new customers. And I'll tell you why it's attracting brand new customers. Because I've been through three waves with the Lund, meaning Gen 1 wave, Gen 2 wave, and Gen 3 wave, Coyote. I have been through all three waves and I know the telltale signs of, uh, um, let's say, a consumer being excited or at least aware of a product out there, taking a chance on it and being able to get started tuning his car with a new device. We'll talk about all that. We'll also give away an MFP crank support, the last one we're giving away. We've given away two. This is gonna be number three. That's right, if you have a GT500 and you need a crank support, if you have an ATI balancer, you can get yourself um, hooked up with a MFP, main force performance, crank support, but we'll do that not before Mr. Bill O'Reilly says hello to the people. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live, fuck it. <laughs> Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! Yeah! Coming out to PMAS! <laughs> oh my god. This is killing my ears. PMAS, Nick James and PMAS. We're gonna do a giveaway next week for our PMAS cold air intake along with the C of the Auto Tech Paddle Kit. Dina Half Formers, Dina Half Formers.com, Dina Half Formers. That's where you get everything, especially Whipple Kit. As a matter of fact, I want to I make sure Dina Half Formers take so much business from Florida shops in terms of Whipple stuff that they become like, I don't know, the number two or three, four dealer, whatever. Dina Half Formers. Quack Farm back on board. Paying a brother a monthly nut. Hit me up on PayPal. You owe me money. PayPal. Park Farm. Um, cars, crank of pallets, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 motors, Predator motors. Wheels, tires, seats, you name it, they got it. Two Auto Solutions, Rami's done on Two Auto Solutions. Been a little quiet, but he's just working. That's a good thing. Nice to see Rami getting after it. Calum Transmission, the Corvette will be up there on the 23rd. So, you have to look out for that. Balak! That's right, he's in Miami. He's selling you the nastiest wheels around. Super light, looks like drug dealer wheels. That's how you know they're good. And MFP, MFP of Australia, Main Force Performance, Matt Coates is owed 300 and I want to say $45,000 or so because, you know, he got screwed over uh, about three or four years ago. Let's see how the people here. 2000 MCR, Paul Pontheu, Joe Swish, Monty 540, Michael Loreno, Joe Jackson, Bryson Wick, Clip Clop the Horse, Joe Jackson, I'm Hung Solo, Dixon, Travis, Gallo, Maki Mock, Stuart D, Naldo, Craig Walls, Billet Noonan. Says up, my boy. Congrats on the new S197, son. The picture that is on the thumbnail is the actual car I purchased. Daniel Baca, Deuce Dita, Ken Phillips, Brian Terry, EPA, says Lore, B. Lavash, Back Tacoma, 2JZ, Fox Body, Oscar Hernandez, Donkey Mac, Oscar Hernandez again, TJ Skorsky, Bryson with Colby, Slow, Tiller, Hoodie, Osmond, Leadfoot, Osmond, Phil Fez, Venom Racing, Wuzzy Stewart, Gen 2, Joe, Smoking ZX14, Clean Night TGT, Guns of the Great, HGFU Grad, Omar X, Sam Morales, Johnny Boy again, HGFU Grad, S197, Whipple 50, Ray Ray, Smoking as ZX14, Escape Production, 508 Josh, let's get all the way to the bottom, say hi to the people here, we'll get after it. DNA, High Performance, that's right, hit him up for your Whipple 
Kits, Leo Modless, Lifestyle, Burt, Allen, Adrian, Greg, Gerg? Did you mean Greg? Is this Gerg Katshi? <laughs> Drock Fox and uh, Midnight. Good enough performance. Miss Good enough performance has been treating me real good. He's a good guy. Hit him up if you need anything locally. Uh, <laughs> don't <laughs> don't advertise. <laughs> Anthony Box of Luxury, Bill B, Matt Angerman, Murad Karatepe, Anthony Smasher Devaro, Slowest Gavin, Derek, YouTube Corrupt says, a gray one? That's the color I want too. Looks good. And it is a performance package, 401A, fully, lo fully loaded deal, um, you know, Shaker 500, the Brembo wheels, the Brembo brakes, exactly what I wanted. Why? I wanted a highly optioned Mustang that's an automatic because more than likely that's what you're going to get. If you're dipping your toe into the Coyote waters, number one, Gen 1 autos with low miles, very tough to come by. I had to keep looking and looking and looking, and the only website that I found it on was an auto trader out of all places. I did Car Gurus, Bring a Trailer, uh, Cars.com, Carfax, I'm sorry, Car Max, sorry, and a whole bunch of others, and none of them had it. Then this weird Chevy dealership had one. But, which is like a conglomerate of, of a bunch of other dealerships, you know, like like Gary Rome Hyundai, Gary Rome Nissan, Gary Rome Ford, blah, 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 blah. So this guy, you know, th th this company had it. The transaction over the phone was easy shit. Here's some money. Out the door, I financed 20 grand. That, out the door. So it's like a $400 payment. Things are good. I'm happy. I'm happy because the Patreon pays for that, if anything. So what I'm going to do more than likely is start with just basic simple stuff as if you were to do it i'm not going to go crazy and start going ham on this thing it's going to be tune cold air in a tune e85 in a tune and then headers because i'm setting myself up for a blower because that's how i think you should do it i don't think you should go full effort na on a car if you are eventually going to want to go nines or potentially quicker. So the way you do it is you set yourself up for a blower. You don't make stupid mods. You don't start doing crazy things. You don't start changing the gear ratio. You're going to live with what you got. It's a nice car that you probably drive daily because it's a highly optioned Mustang. So I'm going to do it the way you would do it. And once it, it's on E85, it's got a converter. It's got a drive shaft. It's got suspension. It's got a drag pack. Okay, now we stuff a blower in it and we start chipping away at everything do some pump gas stuff but nothing crazy i think i can get into the tents easily on pump gas and then we'll shove e85 in it i have a fuel system that was given to me way back in the day that was for a gen 2 actually for a gen 3 i think it'll fit the car i'll make it work get some uh, fic 1400s or id 1300s and live a happy life so that is going to be the project now a lot of people are saying alex why don't you go ahead and go full full effort na you can duplicate the red car's progress and do that with a, with a Gen 1. There is no need for me to do the exact same thing on a Gen 1 that I did on a Gen 2. It's going to prove nothing to nobody. All I'm going to do is waste time and potentially get part of it. <laughs> Just break dancing back there. <laughs> so all I'm going to do is get parts that I'm not going to be able to be reused like a boss intake or like a 18 manifold. I don't want to do that rigmarole. roll. I want it. The car's going to be auto. It's going to need torque. I'm going to do my best to get it going on a stock manifold, not play the NA game. To me, it's a waste of time. I will build it as if you were building it. And we're going to do, I'm going to call ultimate header, ultimate header. I heard you got S197 headers. I'd love to get a set and see how everything goes. I'll do install video. There's going to be a lot of content. Why? Corvette's going away to Ben Calamers on the 21st. Fairmont's going away. You haven't seen content on the Fairmont in forever, but the Fairmont's going away. And the Notch is currently getting, currently right now as we speak, getting a nitrous kit installed. Once that is done, I will give you that content. But in the interim, might, not, might as well get me back into a Coyote where it all started. But I'm going to try to duplicate Donnie's build to the point I even got the same color. I wanted to make sure that, you know, I can do my best to vet this combo. So we'll talk about that shops selling junk parts i understand you get a high margin on junk parts i understand that you want to get business but for the for the life of me can shops actually give you quality parts anymore are we just becoming and, and the answer is yes before i even it's a rhetorical question are we even becoming a a a quality give the customer the best experience, guide them to get the best parts type of, um, let's say, uh, 
culture? No. The, that's why I'm getting a Gen 1 again. I think Gen 2 and up have gotten away from hot rodding. To me, hot rodding is making a car go fast first. Nothing wrong with making a car look good. I think it's fine. But a lot of people that buy a Gen 2, they like how the car looks. The car's IRS. The car mimics a lot of the, let's say, the Euro market. Let's say it's a global car. So a lot of people lower it, stance it, put really, really ugly, ugly spoilers on it. Glitter, sh glitter on the fucking steering wheel. Um... Bullshit on the, on, the, on the headliner. Just dumb stuff. They stance the car. They lower the car so much it scrapes everything. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Anyway, so I want to stick to the Coyote stuff that's still hot rodding. And that's Gen 1. And Fox Body guys are going to pay a lot of attention to it. Why? It is the absolute closest thing you can get to a Fox Body while still having a modern platform. Now, understandably, the motor isn't awesome. It's a 13, so we know we're not going to have Gen 2 style heads, so it's going to be a Gen 1 motor legit, so we'll see what kind of growing pains. I am going to purchase a long block. I'm going to find myself either a short block or a long block because I anticipate the motor not surviving the tests that I'm going to give it, but I'm definitely going to do the crank sprocket. I'm definitely going to do the old pump gear, so I'm blown away that shops are prioritizing, and I get it. You got to make money, but I think you would make money if you were trustworthy as opposed to selling a product that you have a high margin on, namely oil pump gear. Like every shop I know sells a certain brand oil pump gear, but the best ones are TSS or MMR. I know, whatever you think about MMR, I've never seen an issue with oil pressure, any kind of silliness, or a GT500 style pump and pickup with their gears. Like, and then get that 60 or $70 Ford Performance crank sprocket. No, they get the one they get the highest margin on. And I'm just like blown away by, by that thought process. So I'm just, you know, we could talk about that a little bit. And what was the last thing? LRX. So the LRX, because I've been through three waves with Lund Racing, meaning I was there when Gen 1s were still getting tuned and Gen 2 started getting tuned. So when Gen 1s were getting tuned, when I worked at Lund, I was already tuning cars that had intakes, blowers, TVSs, Whipples, you name it. So the wave had already crested and everyone had already modified their Gen 1 to, you know, the end to, to within an inch of its life. So then Gen 2 came out and it was NA stock cold air pump gas. The amount of NA stock cold air pump gas tunes I did at that time when we were representing SET, I think we were doing HP tuner stuff also, and we were doing N-Gage 3. We were representing three tuning companies. We were using three different things. And I'm telling you, it was like 70 new tunes a day. NA, stock cold air, pump gas. So everyone was just buying the device, buying a tune, getting started on that process. Then the same customer went PMAS, JLT, or Steeda 101. And then they went a blower or LU47 and E85, free flowing exhaust. Then they went racing. Then the third wave came. Gen 3, I was there for that too. And that started doing the exact same thing. NA, stock hold air, pump gas tune. NA, stock hold air, pump gas tunes. 80, 100, 200 a day. And then people modded them, blower, and it was Whipple forever. Then ESS destroyed everyone else in terms of volume. And to this day, to, the, to this day, this day, to this day, to this day, ESS still dominates the aftermarket uh, supercharger um, tuning that we're doing. So now LRX comes out. So I'm expecting people just to move over from the device that they don't need internet on or they need internet on and they're going to move over and do other things. No. NA, Gen 1, stock cold air, pump gas. I go, what? NA, Gen 2. Stock cold air, pump gas. NA, Gen 3, stock cold air, pump gas. A wave. And I went, so new customers. Because, you know, these cars, when they get tuned for the first time, you don't need a force file. They, you know, the, the, the tuner sucks off. The stock tune saves it as a stock tune. When it's already tuned, you know, you have to do certain special things to force a flash. These cars are untuned cars, unless Ford reverted them back to stock. Who knows? But the people are literally buying NA, stock cold air tunes, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. So that tells me a couple of things. 
the 24 Mustang is not really selling. It can't be selling. If people are willing to go backwards, Gen 2, Gen 3, and Gen Gen 1, Gen 3, 2, and 1 Coyote Mustang, and are willing to start over with an older platform, just like I said in my previous videos. I said, get ready. Now you're going to start seeing people that were waiting for the newest, latest, and greatest. They're not going to get that shit. They don't care that Whipple kits make 800 with 13 PSI, illegal off-road exhaust and octane booster they go we all know no whipple tune car runs a number none it's always an aftermarket tune car look at what happened with the fp 700 package f-150 it got beat by an na camaro in a stock mustang got beat in a drag race and a roll race a supercharged whipple tuned truck single cab short bed got beat by a old camaro and <laughs> i'm just looking at tony in the background and a 24 Mustang. So I go, dud. I don't care how much it makes on the dyno. If it doesn't perform, it does not matter. So now people are taking their chances and going backwards. And they're scooping up old coyotes. Now, trust me. I guarantee you that there will be a very slight spike. And maybe I'm tooting my own horn a little too hardcore here. But if I start showing you what the Gen 1 can do. Don't you think people are going to start going, wait a minute, I can go 10s with 10 PSI and pump gas with a fucking Gen 1 Coyote? Yes, absolutely. freaking lutely will do it. And people are, and there'll, there'll be a slight spike in those sales, not like a bazillion, but the people that were like, oh, Gen 1 chucks rods, chuck one explodes right off the bat. I'm like, I think I can go 10s pretty easily on a Gen 1 motor. Edwin Martinez was able to go eights with a 2011 stock motor. No re-gapped re, re rings or nothing. He just was able to have a fluid twin turbo kit. He was able to get that installed. And maybe because the turbo kit doesn't stress out the car as much, his car was able to be in the eights with a stock motor. Now, I don't think a supercharged car will, is going to do that. I think... A, especially a Gen 2 that hits really hard down low. I am not interested in a 2650. Understand, this car more than likely will never get a 2650 because it doesn't make sense. The whole reason I got this car is to prove to you guys that a Gen 2 R can take you far enough to blow up the motor and potentially into the low nines where you need a 10 point cage and maybe 150 mile an hour. Now, I am not gonna go crazy gutting this car. I'm not gonna make this car like Brett LaSala's car. I am not gonna make this car a crazy chopped up. No, that is not my interest at all. My interest to, to make it as, as close as to what you would do if this was your only car. Because that's typically what I wanna say 60 to 70% of the people that own Coyote Mustangs do. This is their only car and they want it to perform the best it can and they don't want to have to like buy a daily and blah, 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 blah. So we can talk about any of that stuff you want to talk about. But one of the questions Ken Phillips put up there was very interesting. And I'll talk about that really quick. Uh, where is it? Um, Ken Phillips. He says, why are Mustangs so far ahead in terms of tuning as... Let me see, where did I, I want, I want to highlight the comment, uh, fudge, I guess he must have said it way up there. Wow, a lot of you guys just keep on talking. Uh, okay, it's way up there. Anyway, he said, why, why are Mustangs ahead of tune refinement than Chevy? Well, let's talk about the architecture. The architecture on Coyote Mustangs is wide band right off the rip. Wide band. It... Chevy probably just got wide bands with Global B stuff. You understand? Coyote Mustangs have had two wide bands in the front stock since 2011. The cam loped idle tune was a Ford performance thing in the Procal. Remember the Procal? It looked like a suitcase, red, white, and blue. And you plug it in and it had a choppy tune, a track tune that was lean as shit. But the car performed a little bit better. So that car has been refined and, and because you could draw the file and then let's be honest people started getting engineering type files for these cars meaning people were accessing literature people were accessing a2ls people were accessing c files people were accessing stuff that 
Ford had. And it made its way into the market. Now, I don't know if on the Chevy side of things, there are engineers that are willing to risk their careers to provide the Chevy market some aftermarket background stuff. Some of the best tuning done with Coyotes is not done with any commercially available software. As a matter of fact, the best Coyote tuning is done with software that is not commercially available. And I've said that and alluded to it many times, and a lot of you guys think you know, but in actuality, you don't know anything. I know you guys have guessed you, on Patreon. You're like, do you guys use this? Do you guys use that? I'm not going to tell you anything. I'm just going to tell you, if you're a pro racer package owner or a HP tuner MPVI guy, I don't even think you can make the trans brake work if you wire it in. I don't even think you can make a Gen 3 car with a trans brake properly fucking shift. Oh, I just use the HP tuner's trans brake. You mean the one that locks up all the fucking clutches together? No, we don't do that. I'm saying if you wire in a three relay situation or a 10R stager, and then you have to make the changes in the tune, it becomes a bit of an issue with commercially available software. So there's a lot of stuff in the background that was, I want to say engineers risk their careers on the Ford side to provide files to people so that their kids can go to college, so they can get an addition on a house. So they can, you know, buy an airplane. Look, these these engineers make $100,000 a year. And if there's a, let's say, someone out there going, hey, yo, um, I need to know the playbook. I need to get the playbook. Do you know what I'm saying? I need to get the playbook so I can understand what the, you know, the if, then, what, maybe, you know? Boom. He's like, well, you know, the C he, he trips and falls over the coffee table and a USB stick falls out. That's, I think, the difference. I don't know if on the Chevy side, anyone is willing. I don't know if they're willing to risk their careers to get that stuff. And I think on the Chevy side, unfortunately, they have to rely on commercially available software. Okay, now let's let's talk about what a software guy versus the tuner is a software guy is an engineer he 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 has theories he he has a a a a, a, a software that is already done that populates things in cells oh this looks like the spark table this looks like the torque tables this looks like the shifting tables bam 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 here you go does that guy know how to tune not just no Fuck no. And this is the way I tell people how it works. A build, a guy who, an architect can design a building. An architect can tell you where certain things need to go. And then the engineer, the structural engineer maybe, grabs that and goes, okay, you need joists here. You need this type of beam. You need this type of material. But then the guy on the ground, the guy that's actually moving beams around and riveting them in goes, this is fucking stupid. What you designed is in the wrong spot. The stuff that you told me to do, it, mechanics curse out engineers every fucking day. Okay, if you have a Fox body, you would know this by trying to take the thermostat bolt out. Go ahead. Try that. Try to see how easy it is. To grab two bolts out of a thermostat housing in, in a 79 to 93 Fox body. You want to pull your hair out. So then you go, what fucking engineer designed this? Software engineers? Tuners. The tuners make everything happen. The software people just put software up there. So I'm blown away when software people pop off on social media like they're, like they're doing something. But at the end of the day, they don't know how to tune. They go, oh, I got this. I'm like, okay, cool. How come it's, how come it's still doing this when I do this? How come it still has a PO315? How come it's got this? How come it's got that? So understand, a lot of people out there are, you know, saying things just so they could look good on social media. I'm going to tell you right off the rip, I'm a fucking dumbass. But I'm a dumbass that understands the bullshit that these people are trying to tell you. The people that tune know more about tuning than the people that have software. The engineers now, the, the, the guys at Ford, they know everything. They have computers on these cars that they just drive for miles and it just populates data, populates data, populates data. And then they can decompile that data and then spit out in other software, the torque table, the math curve, the spark stuff, 
the HDFX, everything with really, really crazy badass stuff. And if one of those files makes their way into the tuner's hands, not the software guy. Software guy looks at it and goes, I don't know what this does, but I'm going to populate it. The tuner has to enable it, put it in a car, and see what it does, a.k.a. the guy building the building, a.k.a. the mechanic servicing the car, the engineer's design. So that's why Ford has a leg up than Chevy because, in my opinion, I suspect Ford engineers are willing to risk their careers to make files available to the market. But let's just say, in an alternate universe, those engineers were told to release stuff. Hey, you know... How about don't encrypt that file? What do you mean? Don't encrypt it. Just um, send it out. Send it out. What if they suck it off? That's okay. People will tune it. That car will go faster with our parts. People are going to want to buy it because it's tunable. Because nobody are looking. Nobody is looking to buy a 24 Mustang if no tuning can be done low and slow pay for premium what fucking peasant still watches commercials on YouTube if you learn on YouTube if you are on YouTube a lot and you watch NASA space flight and you watch all this crap and you don't pay $11 a month to get rid of ads but all you do is complain about ads but YouTube is providing you a basic uh 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 encyclopedia of everything ever that you can learn on and you will not pay 11 bucks complain about 11 bucks but then you're gonna buy three starbucks caramel macchiatos at five dollars each boy shut up shut up hey people that complain about ads how do you think i get paid you don't think are you learning anything here do you think you're learning anything then watch the fucking stupid tampon ad god damn it uh, Elon Musk makes it simple. Electricity every day of my life. Every engineer should have been a mechanic for five years first. Just like homie saying GT250 can't handle boost. Thank you. Good enough performance is here. Good enough. Please, please tell the people what the GT, what, what the Ford engineer said about the GT350 not handling any boost. We, I was working at VMP at the time. We went to SEMA. We went to the Ford racing tent that by the drifting area. Oh, so fucking gay. Oh, my God. Everyone had herpes. Like, everyone in the area had herpes. And uh, we're there, and we're looking at a GT350 crank, rods, pistons. We're like, wow. So the engineers, they like, I'm the pro I'm the head engineer of, you know, sucking, you know, sucking balls. And I'm like, okay, cool. What would happen if you were to supercharge a 5.2 liter flat plane crank, badass high revving GT350? Oh, the... The... The crank will fly out the bitch. Have you done it? No. No. They have not done it. Like maybe they put a, a Ford performance supercharger on something that looked like a GT350, which to me was more than was was more than <laughs> was more than likely a 52 Predator test mule. And around that time, one of the guys at VMP got fucking in trouble because he started popping off on some dumb shit. Like, he started saying some crazy stuff. Good enough performance says, the Ford engineer told us not to do it. Ha ha. And told us that that's why they made the 5.2 XS. And now, in hindsight, 8 PSI GT350s make 600, 700 rubble horsepower pump gas. Like, super low boost. Things chilling. 10 PSI E85. That sucker makes 800. And, you know, 16 to 17s are sus. I'm sorry, 16 to 18s are sus. But 19 and 20s are stout. So I would take a 19 and 20, 350, which, again, that can happen in the future. Look, did you think, knowing this channel, that I was going to get myself a Gen 1 Auto? No. But I said to myself, I said, self, why get another Gen 1 stick car when you have the Notch, the Corvette, and the GT500 are stick cars? Why would I do that? That's just nonsensical. So then... A lot of people buy Gen 1 Mustangs with an auto. And I'm, in my ticket system, I'm like, bro, these guys are still getting after it with an auto. I'm like, fuck, let me do that. And I did it because there's going to be a bit of a lull in the action because three cars are going to be out. I'm going to be here with no cars. Might as well get something and get some content. Their head herp engineer, what does the what does JG the boss think about engineers? A ported V2 CJ is better. Unported V1 CJ is better. <sighs> I don't care. Uh, thoughts on... Uh, don't care what what money 540 have you been watching the show at all i don't talk on them motherfuckers 
unreliable. Everything they talk, they are advertising 900 horsepower. Listen closely. GT500 cars on pump gas. Get your pump gas package here. 900 horsepower. 2020 enough GT500 packages. Go ahead, dumbasses. If you think you could do that long term, do a little history search. Do a little history search. Go back in time and see what those cars that come out of that camp do at the track. The V2 coverage manifold, nobody cares. Um, the, I use the Boss Premium account on TV and give me a thumbs up on that account. I also have my Peasant YouTube account with my phone for comments and give a thumbs up there too. What a guy. Uh, torque storm for the Gen 1? Fuck no. I am not getting a torque storm for the Gen 1. The Gen 1 is going to get a VMP Gen 3R instead of a torque storm. Um, Alex, building a bargain. Been great goose. 18 has been solid. Been making 1,000 horsepower for about two years, but I only run 85. My body is ready for Gen 1 stuff since I'm poor. A member talking like that. Come on, man. I know better. Uh, DNA for all Whipple needs, exactly. Manufacturers should release all the files they own in their best interest. Nothing moves performance cars like tuning potential. And nothing would be better for my ego if Ford was to say, brother, Lund, we love you. We love what you're doing with the LRX. We love what you're doing. We, we, we see that you're legit. You need to get rid of Alex in order for us to work with you. Oh, Feather in my cap. I'd go. <sighs> and I would urge Lund to let me go. And put me under, you know, Reynaldo Rodriguez. <laughs> hey, they hired a new guy. Reynaldo Rodriguez. You know? Um, or not. Or I could just do this. But still be affiliated with the brand. I I can survive with this stuff. Uh, no. No. Of course not, Nardi. What, what a stupid question. Cars tuned to PPD. Do what mine did. Oh, my God, car enthusiast. Legally retarded performance. I don't know numbers. Don't, mean, don't matter in the real life. Um, Riley Newfeld said it's a scam. Oh, my God. You, you read that. I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna, you know, pop off on that stuff. Can you video the crank sprocket and oil pump gear in detail, please? There's videos on YouTube right now of that already. I don't need to give you my two cents because I'm just going to do the job. Because doing the job takes a while. Doing the job and filming and editing and taking lighting is going to take three days to do a crank sprocket install. No, I'm not going to go full UPR on the Gen 1. I already did that. I'll probably go Team Z stuff. I'll probably go Maximum Motorsport stuff, which is what is on the blue car. My GT500 has all Maximum Motorsport stuff underneath it, and I love it. Um, did you did you mean to say Gen 2R instead of a Gen 3R? Sorry, uh, if I said Gen 3R, I apologize. Look, sometimes I listen back to the show and I misspeak nonstop. You try to talk for an hour and a half without any preparation off the dome and see what happens. Um, illuminated with Porta VMP Gen 3R for the win. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what um, a customer of Lund has. It's an 860 car. 4R200, Gen 3R, E85, Illuminator, fucking 860s, like nothing. That three-letter shit-ass company competitor to tuner couldn't figure out what my basic 93 Ripple Gen 3 would rev on startup. I still have the data log screenshots of the blip. I switched to Lund after that. So what's up with the Audi R8 that is Lund tuned? What the fuck are you talking about? The fucking Audi R8 that's Lund tuned. Who the, who the fuck are you talking about? Where, where do you get that? So what's up with the... There is no R8 with a Lund tune. That's just stupid. Um... Imagine the stories a free agent Alex would have. So Lifestyle says, uh, Lifestyle 2.0 says, I had a 2.3 TVS on my 12 GT, E70, lived a lot. E70, I'm done. Get the fuck out. He said E70. Glad you went with the coupe. That would have been funny to see a fast drop top. So the reason I didn't go with the drop top, th Tony's going to be annoying. I got to get him out of here. He's just going to be annoying all day. Got to go, buddy. Got to go. The dog just doesn't know how to stay still. He's like slapping around and making his ball slap his stomach. And I'm like, bro, could you just like sit there and do nothing? No, he does not know what that even is. Um, the, the, the reason I didn't get a convertible, um, one was, let's, let's be honest, price. Um, the price was about the same as a coupe that was fully loaded. Now, the coupes did have, I'm sorry, the uh, convertibles did have less miles. But that didn't really matter. In my opinion, I wanted a coupe always first. 
And if I couldn't find a coupe, okay, I'll settle for a convertible, but uh, the convertible had to be like a California Special, had to be ruby red, had to be a 14, had to be highly optioned, but couldn't find anything like that. Um, DNA Have Form says, we're direct with Maximum Motorsports and Team Z. DNA, I'll be hitting you up. <laughs> 2000 MCR. I highlighted the comment. You know what? I don't name this company because they love to threaten you with legal action. So... Yeah. Hey, Alex, do you think the price difference between the Performance Pack 2 Mustang and a Mach 1 is justified for the road racing? The Mach 1 is a fucking GT with a 350 manifold, throttle body, and intake. Same. And, and, and a Tremec transmission. Like, it's not better. That Tremec is weaker than the MT-82. It is better geared. Yes, it has a better gear stack. So it's up to you if you think it's worth it or not. R8 with an N-gauge. No, definitely not. Alex, I know that idiot. He got trolled by an RS3 on the Draggy page today. What? What are you talking about? Hot Dog Water Tune. Uh, Dad says, side note, mad respect to Lund has people who work out. If your tuner looks like he don't take care of himself, why would they take care of your car? So, Junior, Senior, Dakota. Well, Dakota, uh, Dakota, he still can't bench two plates. So, I'm a little... <clears throat> Dakota, you got to bench two plates, bro. You, you got to get in there with two plates because we care that you are in the two-play club. Nardi doesn't even care. Nardi is out there, you know, like, like he feeds his dogs better than he feeds himself. So Dakota needs to do two plates, and then uh, we can talk. But uh, Junior can deadlift damn near 500-plus pounds. He, he's close to benching 300 um, or has done it once or twice. Uh, Brandon has done two plates, but sus, weird grip. Just He just looks super uncomfortable doing it, but he's done it. Um, so, yeah, we, we try to get healthy because – if someone's going to come at us, uh, we got a little strength. Just a little strength. Alex is Eminem of the Tuning World straight off the dome. G, freestyle all up in here, battling himself because he got no competition. Facts for life. Um, Chicks thinks guys in convertibles are creeps. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get cars for girls, obviously. Um, if I wanted to see you running 10s with the tan bald head with the top down. No, I wasn't going to do it with the top down. I don't want to kill myself. I mean, that'd be like instant death. Ordered a catch hand this week from Need to Have Performance, my first mod on my 23. Very, very smart. Now, I will do that. The, the thing is about Gen 1 content is who's winning the weight loss challenge? Me. I'm down 10 pounds. Uh, they're also down 10 pounds, but they started at a higher weight. So it's a percentage. I started at 233. Now I'm at 223. Woke up this morning. To, like, after a big, nasty coffee shit. Like, <laughs> you, drink, you drink your coffee and it, here it comes. And then you piss, and then you weigh yourself, right? And you don't, you don't like weigh yourself right when you get up because you that's at least a, a third of a pound that, you know, you're pooping. Um, wait, Dakota can't do two plates? I'm going to need a new tuner. <laughs> so he's close. He's, he's, a little, he's, he's not a little guy, but he's, he's like 160 pounds or 170. So, you know, two plates is tough for the homeboy. He needs to eat a lot more. He just needs to eat a shitload and just get fat and just push that weight up. DNA shipping is on point in customer service. If you don't see it on the site, ask them about it. Show them the cabs you convertible. Learn about to spin a block. Got to get ready to squabble. So the nice thing about Gen 1 content is I could do this. I can bring the basic stuff that people just forgot about. Like, hey, you need a catch can. Why? Because it sucks in oil. And by the way, thank God there's this guy on YouTube, young kid who does quick informational videos about Fords. Ford has a recall on a calibration so that the truck does not go into diesel fuel cutoff. What happens when you, anyone, what happens mechanically, let's say with the piston rings, if you do a pull, right? And then every dumb motherfucker that does this obviously does not know how, do not know how cars work. They rev up, then they let off in gear. I'm like, oh my God, there go the rings. There goes oil past the ring into the combustion chamber, burning blue, blue smoke comes out the back. So Ford said that the F-150s had too much oil consumption. And they figured out that if you went into diesel, meaning engine braking, that it would get oil past the rings into the combustion chamber and burn it. So when I see people do wide open throttle pulls on a dyno, leave it in gear, 
and then let it desail all the way down to idle, I don't want anything to do with you. You push the clutch in. You put it in neutral. You let the car, or you upshift. If it's an auto and you're a select shift and you do a pull and forth, when the pull is done, upshift twice with the paddle or nudge it to drive when you're done. Stop recording, upshift twice. No, these don't, or, or, or four more times if it's a 10R80. Oh, actually, you'd be six, so two more times. But these dumb motherfuckers are go wide open throttle, let off in gear. And let the car decel all the way the fuck down, letting the engine slow the fucking uh, RPMs down. Holy shit, you're stupid. You're stupid. You don't know shit about cars. You don't know what that's doing to the range. You don't know. You're doing crazy stuff. So when I see that, I go, just like 10R80, assholes that do a pull at the track. And they just let off and they let the car downshift rev match with a 10R80. Have you ever seen that? End of the track. Whoa! 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 What the fuck, dude? You don't know anything about cars if you let your car do that. I don't want those people in my fucking area code, bro. They're fucking retarded. Slow the car down with the brakes. Put it in drive. Do not. Rev, rev, downshift, downshift. That is so stupid. So I will show with the Gen 1, the inside of the intake, inside of the throttle body. I get a rag, inside of the throttle body, huh, bunch of oil. I guarantee a bunch of fucking nasty, gross oil. So we'll see how all that goes. Love watching dyno guys that do that after a pull. 8,000 RPMs to 2,000 D cell. I want to make sure I keep track of that car so I never fucking buy it. Alex, is the Recon 20 Mustang brake booster? Ford says it just needs to come and update the software. Sus. I don't want to put anyone near my Luntune ESS OBD port. Your thoughts. What is the recall? What is it? Is, is, it, is there something wrong with the brake booster itself? Is, the, is there a vacuum leak? Is there an issue? Is there an electronic issue? Is there a mechanical issue? Is it a plunger? Like, what is the issue? Leave engine brake into diesels. I'm glad you touched on this. I wondered about this at the track. Why is my car burning so much oil? But Alex, they have bicycle brakes. But why would they? Alex, why would Ford allow downshift red matching if, if they didn't want you to do that? For road racing, pendejo. When you're road racing and you're on diesel and you slow down, you want the RPMs to stay up. So that when you take that turn, it's still in a high RPM. And it goes, whoa, whoa. And then you pull out of that corner. For drag racing, asshole. Because you want your car to go, wah, 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 like the guy handing you the time slip. This is what the guy handing you the time slip hears. Thirteen two, congratulations, dickhead. clowns all of you i fucking hate you all you 10 already clown motherfuckers i hate every single one <laughs> fuck all you god damn it and you guys do that shift that do downshift the 10r at 140 mile an hour and in the bay area because it sounds cool after hitting dragon mode i switch it back to normal asap my my hurts my heart to hear the engine braking if i sell my fully built gt5 phone with a lunt tune what's the process of the new buyer kilometers you sell it to them and you tell the buyer to hit us up in the ticket system give us the serial number for the device say hey i bought this car and we're going to charge them 150 the software update was so light it doesn't come on when you have low brake fluid if i remember correctly my god that won't that um that it won't read when it's low got it got it got it 13 2 at 124 right 10 or 80 guys they they pull up like oh here we go my gt500 front end non-matching fenders because the front end looks like you know you know like what 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 what's Buzz Killington? Is it Buzz Killington that looks like that? Let's see, Buzz Killington. Yes, you, you, you. <laughs> yeah, your, your your front end looks like Buzz Killington's jaw. You know, with just stupid non-matching, dumb header ass, having ass. Buzz Killington, yeah, yeah, like this. 
This is how you GT500 owners, uh, GT500 front end guys on a GT look when, when you don't have the whole matching front end. Don't, if you're going to do the thing, do the whole fucking thing. Don't just do the front end, you stupid asshole. What's, what's wrong with people? Um, uh, laugh myself. It's so true when they wonder why the trans is all messed up. Hey, Alex, um, I think I need a tune refresh. Why? Well, my transmission is doing weird shit. Are you letting it decel downshift 10 times? Well, yeah. What's wrong with that? Stupid. You're stupid. You don't know shit about cars. Go learn something. You don't know a goddamn thing about cars. When I did dyno pulls, I even hated the fact that when I pushed in the clutch, there was an RPM flare. I went, ah. So I would catch it early. You know what I would do? I go, wow, 7,500? I stop the fucking dyno sampling. Then I let off the gas slightly, and then I push in the clutch. And it stopped that flare. And I was like, oh, look. I actually learned how to manipulate the car. Like, there are still people out there with mu Coyote Mustang. They're like, hey, can you get rid of the throttle delay? You mean the drive-by wire throttle delay? You mean the factory drive-by wire delay? Do you want me to... Oh, okay. Here's a tune. And when you load the tune, an, a cable is going to magically come out and connect itself to the throttle body and the pedal, making it one-to-one. -one. As a matter of fact, we have a tune that anticipates... Actually, it has a slight element of 115 in it, so it bends space-time in front of your fucking foot, dickhead. And what it does is your foot going forward actually is delayed because element 115 bends space-time so the throttle body is in the future, and it knows what you want. So it takes all of the uh, all of the uh, dead pedal feel away. Hey, Alex, when I let off of my 6R80 or 10R80 Mustang, it's still accelerating for 0.3 seconds after I let off. I looked at the data log on XL, and it's still going up in our... Oh, because it upshifted? Oh. Yeah, that makes sense. You're stupid. You're all stupid. Uh, dude, the Gen 1 conversion bumper is a sin against humanity. This live is lit today. Alex got that Bellac beadlock power to clear those allergies today. Alex, I want to hear it pop. Can it do it to mine? There is an R8 owner in my complex. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute, Alex. People have exotic cars in your complex? How can they have exotic cars and have a studio apartment? <laughs> There's GTRs here. There's, there's guy has an R8 in my complex, and he desells to make it pop. And at DCT, I'm like, holy shit! Just because you have an R8 doesn't mean you know shit about cars. Just means you're a dumbass with money. That's it. They need that pedal block so you don't do, do whatever. Sounds like some fast X shit. <laughs> pedal commander. Uh, by the way, I love Gail Banks. The problem with Gail Banks is he knows too much. And I think it, I don't know, it lowers his standing a little bit when he goes after like a stupid company like Pedal Commander. Guys, there's a way better product than the Pedal Commander. I mean, I don't even know why you guys think the Pedal Commander is... Um, what was it? Foot plus? Is it foot plus? Uh, Alejandro. I mean, the pedal commander is so stupid, but I would love to see. Um, what is it? Pedal enhancer? Uh, Alejandro Flores pedal. Pedal extender. <laughs> yeah, look it. Gail Banks, you went in after the, 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 the pedal commander? This. <laughs> This is, this, this is what you need. Wait, wait, Push wait. down on the oh, gas pedal. Oh, oh, oh. Is this? <laughs> hey, having to press the pedal all the way oh, down for fuck. maximum performance. <laughs> so if you guys, you know, you want your drive-by wire field to be like, you know, more zippy and snappy. Well, guess what? Yellow Douchebag Industries has a product for you. Hey, having to press the pedal all the way down for maximum performance. <laughs> Introducing the pedal extender. <laughs> What's it consist of? A revolutionary design. A two by four block of wood. Some tape. Done! <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Call in the next 30 minutes and you'll get the brake maximizer. 
Same block of wood, just painted red. There you go. So look, if you don't like how the fucking thing, you know, the drive-by wire system acts, then all you have to do is get a pedal extender. And I will absolutely guarantee the pedal will feel at least two inches zippier. <laughs> Whoa, holy shit, this is nuts. <laughs> Gail had a field there with SMB intakes. By the way, they're making intakes, aka JLT, which is SMB, for Corvettes now. And in one of their commercials, they're like, hey, how you guys doing? So what we got here is a Calder intake for a Corvette. And if you don't want to tune, and he removes the insert, and the fucking, the, the hole's like tiny. It's like this. And then if you want to tune, take that out. And I'm like, wait a minute, why would someone buy a big, stupid, cold air, and... Why would you even give them a no tune require a no tune required option? It's so stupid. I'm still waiting for my pedal extender ordered motherfuckers years ago at least two inches. When we need a yellow return for the S197 sold pedal extender is what I was talking about. Oh, gotcha. Let me get that red brake pedal, the brake maximizer. Hey, you know my brakes are not really touchy. Well, guess what? That block of wood painted red, a piece of tape, <laughs> put it right your stupid foot, asshole, and it will stop. At least two inches quicker. <laughs> Order now, get a second one free. A block of wood, tape, done. I need to make that a sound bite. A block of wood, tape. What's it consist of? <laughs> a revolutionary design. A two by four block of wood, <laughs> some tape, done. <laughs> I don't know how you guys don't search my channel for those awesome nuggets of gold hail um they're everywhere can i get that pedal extender in carbon fiber was that paint bmr red i should pair them with lrx for maximum performance i want to build an s550 street says tyler rose 600 650 horsepower what's the best power render for me i'll answer this in an honest way any power rider at 10 psi has the ability on a manual with good gas to make 600 to 650 how do you want your power delivered? Do you want it now? TVS. Do you want it kind of now, but a little later? Whipple. Do you want it after 6,000 RPMs? ESS, e uh, Vortec, or Pax Inner Pro Charger, if you dislike your, 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 your cranks now. Alex, did John see you tune in R8 recently? What the fuck are you talking about? No. John does not even know how to start tuning R8s. It's a Ford. He's a domestic market guy. No. They're probably kidding, you know. They're probably, they're probably making fun. Um, pedal extended with a free resonator deleter. Gen 2 or Gen 3 manual for a full bolt-on daily. Does it matter? I mean, look, if it's going to be full bolt-on Gen 3 because it makes more power. Better heads, better cams, higher compression. Right? Gen 3 motor is just better heads, better cams, higher compression. I think slightly larger valves. 12, 12 millimeter head studs or, or bolts. So... The Gen 3 motor is better than the Gen 2 motor NA. But boost for boost, it's, it's, it's a flush, in my opinion. Because I've seen Gen 2 motors make a 1,000 with not much effort, neither. And same thing with Gen 3s. Not Gen 1s, though. Gen 1s start to kind of tap out at, you know, 750 or so. Well, the pedal extender improved my taurine tune. Do they make longer brake block for easy heel toe? Asking for a friend. Pedal extender outselling resonator deleter. What about a clutch extender? Trust me. I watch those old bids when I need a laugh. It's YOLO Industries EPA approved. You know what? Don't, don't give EPA any ideas about if that block of wood is pressure treated or not. Um, Lun tuning BMW is now EPA certified as well as eco-friendly materials. Bondo Bird. What's up, Bondo Bird? By the way, Bondo Bird, I heard a rumor from a completely different source that VMP at their open house might be announcing their partnership with Whipple. Now, if that happens, I want a video of it, send it to my inbox, because then I'm gonna play that overlaid with my video predicting this would happen three or four weeks ago or five weeks ago. Now, if it doesn't happen, cool, I'll, whatever. But I got, from a, I got from a really good source that this weekend, in their um, supposed uh, open house, he's going to announce his partnership with Whipple. And if that's the and if that's the case, then my sources are rock solid. If not, fuck them. 
Save your money and go boost. Goddamn. What's better, performance mod? Pedal extender or resonator deleter? I really think if you're, if you're, uh, um, oh my God, where is it? I, I think it, we have an MBRP resonator deleter. Like, like you could have edited that out. You could have gone into the software and gone, I'm sorry, man, I fucked up. It's resonator delete. And he just like, yeah, but <laughs> <laughs> that's what I would have edited in. Gen 3, better motor, shitty trans. I'm getting deja vu. I think I've heard Alex go over this already. Everyone remembers YOLO. Your Lund hat is too nice to bill fold these days. Um, I'm going to have to call Lund about getting that RA tune. Hey, Alex, can I push 600 horsepower and pump gas? As long as I get tuned by Lund. Oh, my Lord. This is literally the peasant chat. Is the GT500 short block O-ring? And do you need an MLS get? What? Wait, what? Cardis TV? Oh, you're talking about me? No, mine is not O-ring. I'm not looking to make more than 1,100 verbal horsepower on that car. Because then it becomes like stupid power that can blow up at any time. Whereas a 1,100 on a built GT500 motor is, I don't want to say safe because that sounds stupid. But it's not, it, it's not that hard to make 1,000 horsepower reliably on a 5.8 motor. I hope we get to see your Gen 1 heads when they get sent out to LNM for their race porting. No, no porting. If I'm going to upgrade the heads on the uh, Gen 1, it'll be Gen 2 heads. Gen 2 heads are boss heads, and that's it. Um, EPA going to call Lund Racing for Alex talking shit. Yolo sued by Disney for stealing Shorty's idea. Um, okay, I just used an old block of lead. Okay, okay, can we get off of that stuff? People are trying to be like zingers and one-liners. You're not going to be me. I mean, I'm, I'm the creator. Um, rev breaking performance is rev bake breaking is performance anxiety. I mean, look, 10 or 80 guys, I think are so clout driven because what is it that the 10 or 80 guys ask for after the tune is done? I'm saying tunes done. We're done. Get the fuck out of here. Right. By the way, I want 400 likes. So we have 364 and I'm not going to give away a MFP crank support until we have 400 likes. We got 630 people on. So let's go. So this is the lineage or, or, or how 10 or 80 guys ask for a tune. Hey, hold on it. Can I get a 93 octane tune? Here you go. Log it. Okay, can I get a manual mode tune with that 93 octane tune? I'm like, fucker, why? It's pumped gas. Oh, but you know, I wanted to auto option that what? Okay, here you go. Hold on it. Oh, can you make it shift harder? Oh, fuck me. Here, drag mode tune. Okay, one more thing. Do you think we can shift to that 8,500 RPMs on pump gas? Well, yeah, I heard this thing just keep making power. Infinite, infinite power curve. Like the, the dyno just keeps going straight up. I saw this guy go to Parker Performance and he said the dyno goes straight up. Same guy sells revaled Vikings as his own. So... I say, okay, no, we're going to shift to that 7,500. Shut the fuck up. Get the fuck out of here. Then he goes, I bought a PMAS zoom tick. So now what do I have to do? PMAS normal, PMAS manual mode, PMAS drag mode, and, uh, you know, three more tunes. And then they go, E85. PMAS, E85, PMAS, E85 drag mode, P PMAS, E85. So now his tune fucking folder has 30 tunes in it. And then, when we're done and there is nothing else to do, NA, he goes, I would really appreciate it if you could make this thing go. I'm like, I don't do that. We don't do pop, burble, bang tunes. Oh, but they do it over at San Antonio. <laughs> then go to them, bro. Go to them. And then, you know, a month or two later, they're like, hey, I got an ESS kit. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, fuck, 16 more. Tune folders like this. Meanwhile, the best ones are like this. Hey, I got a 93 tune. Cool. Hey, I just threw a fucking blower on it. Let's go. E85, let's do it. I'm like, oh, I love you. I love you. Thank you. Alex, we're only seeing 570 horsepower. Yeah, your shit's fucked up. Your shit's fucked up. 
you may have something wrong with that car. Yes, um, if you're seeing 10 pounds somewhere, but the car's only making 570 wheel, I heard about this in the, in the, in the ticket system, something is off because you showed in that ticket that your car at 10 PSI made 630. So this is the same tuning architecture. So if it if it's down uh, you know 80 horse compared to the other one, something's wrong mechanically. So we got to see where the disconnect is. Uh, <laughs> it does it is CR. What do you think about the 68 liter Mustang? By the way, what happened to that? What happened to that? Remember everyone saying, "Oh wait, wait till this Godzilla. Wait till this Godzilla, Alex. You don't get it. Guys with rat, rat uh, uh, posters, Def Leppard." You know, still hanging on to that last hair on your fucking noggin from the 80s, looking all stupid. Bro, no push. Okay, if a push rod ends up in a Mustang, I wouldn't be surprised right now because one thing that will never surprise me is is Jim Farley doing just ridiculous stuff. Like he's he, he's been proven to like say wild shit, but he's just, just a, he'd be liable to put like a, a, a push rod in it. You know, I want to get back into making street race cars, especially ones you can't tune for shit. 12 second stick shift Mustangs are fast enough. I mean, he's for not my wrong. next trick. I'll make the Mustang a compact truck. We'll call it the Cuckstang. Since the drift stick is a hit, we'll include it in everything we sell. F-350s, F-150s, everything. Fuck it. <laughs> E.L. <laughs> we can't sell these pieces of shit to the public. So we'll let our UAW dickheads buy it. Hopefully, they won't buy a test. Uh, I think it was a test. We all know we're the last V8 left. We were never the fastest. <laughs> and Dodge pushed our shit in all the way out of our mouths, <laughs> which we actually likes because we're gay. <laughs> Whoa! I am building a spaceship so I can launch Ford vehicles where they are most useful. <laughs> to Uranus. <laughs> Here at Ford, we're innovators. First, we make slow NAA Mustangs. Then we got rid of the shifter in the GT500. We are happy to announce your driver's seat will have a dildo with sensors so that when you squeeze your asshole, it will cause the car to upshift and the feedback from the shitster will make you come. I think he was going to say come, but I don't know if he actually says it at the end. Make you come. <laughs> and I could go for a stiff glass of anal sex right now. Whoa. Take my ass, Elon Musk. And real. I'd like to introduce uh, everyone. Okay, that's to my enough of that. You know, I think thank you for joining us, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Farley. But uh, that's enough of you. And yes, this is a bottle of. Someone asked on the chat, "Is that a bottle of pump gas?" Yes, I'm gonna make sure that I keep a bottle of pump gas handy, in case people want to know what pump gas looks like to tuners down in Florida, and and parts houses. This is a bottle of pump gas. <laughs> Fucking clown shit. Um, jamming out to the trap, uh, Alex. Uh, what are you? What are your thoughts on ex or experience with the boiler split fire, or just stick with the traditional X pipe, homie Caesar? Are you saying the one that has like seventeen X's, the M pipe, <laughs> the Enya pipe, the Uve pipe, <laughs> the Eje pipe? <laughs> you guys, only Spanish speakers know what the fuck I'm talking about. Hey, Alex, can you make my Mustang have a fuck the seals cam? Where's Carol Shelby with this tall glass? But the new Ford GT will have a twin turbo Godzilla. I'm going to get one. Remember when Stang Mode said that? He's like, I'm going to get one. What? <laughs> you think they're going to put a truck? Maybe they are. I Look, I wouldn't put it past them anymore. I am so sick of Ford. Like, the recalls are crazy still. The quality still sucks. Then he's going to go, we're going to make race cars for the street. And you dumbasses get excited. I'm like, what about the last three years and the highest recall of any auto manufacturer ever gives you, instills confidence in the fact that he's going to make a better product and street race cars. By the way, we have 427 people on and the we're going to do car shit. God damn it. Fuck you guys. I don't want to do car trivia. I hate car trivia. It's so stupid because this is why. If I was to ever to say, when was the first overhead cam engine? And I'm referencing like shit that I know. So I would say 96. But you dumb sons of bitches go, they had a 427 single overhead cam engine back in 1932. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Shut up. 
So that's why I don't like car questions. It's so subjective. There's, you know, one engineer at Ford got crazy and decided to like, you know, paint a car blue that never got a blue color code. And you'll say, oh, you know, you owe me this kit because because car shit is so fucking subjective. Fox body trivia, bro. Are you, are you crazy? Fox body trivia. These guys don't know shit about Fox. But and that's another thing. Fox body were, let's say, another they're, they're, it's subjective. There's like Cougars, there's Capris, there's ASC McLaren, convertible Mustangs. Like there's, there's, it's just so stupidly subjective. But I'll look something up. And again, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna prioritize the members. But I'm looking it up right now. I'm gonna see if there's any kind of trivia things. Uh, da, 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 da. It's to see if I can look into it uh oh my god i'm not gonna disable my ad blocker fuck you disable your ad blocker why so just a big twat comes on my screen oh <laughs> no thank you um let's do fox body trivia oh i didn't spell it right fox body trivia oh full body how about fox body there we go 10 exciting facts and watch it watch it want a um Okay, da da da. Blah, 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 blah. What is Fox Body and Mustang? Okay, I'm looking, looking, looking. Ah, uh, fuck. Yeah, this is. It's gonna be tough to do car trivia, but I can, I can, I can do something really stupid. When you're gonna hate this, so you're gonna have to do googling. So get 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 your Google machines out, and tell me when in what year. According to Google, okay, this is according to Google. I, I don't know about that. But according to Google, what year did Ford make its first? I'm going to, oh, hold on. I'm going to, okay, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I, I, I do this right. So I, I put it up on the screen so you guys can't refute who won or who didn't. What year did Ford make its first GT250 go? What year did Ford make the first GT350 go? Come on, come on, come on. Do, do, do. Oh, you guys are just putting 1942. Pat, what is wrong with you? No, Anthony, no, no. And I'm going to look up, I'm going to show you the answer after the, oh, cool, DNA, you're almost there. Why are you even fucking saying anything? 1956, this motherfucker. No, nope. Gallo Bravo, no. Again, I'm going by Google. And this is the problem. Brandon Horton was the first non- and Tony Dominguez was the first member. So I'm going to have to, I know I prioritize the members, but look, this is, so y'all don't think I'm just giving it away to the, um, to the, to the members, Brandon Horton right here. The first Shelby GT350 debuted in 1965, according to Google. So Brandon Horton, congratulations. You win because you wanted car trivia. I hate car trivia. It's so fucking stupid. But, you know, let's do uh, 1965 for Brandon Horton. Where the fuck did you go? Where'd you go? Da -da 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 -da. Where'd you go? Come on, come on, Alex. Oh, come on. Did you lose it already, dumbass? Brandon Horton. Where? There he is. Brandon Horton. So, Brandon Horton, hit me up at YDBT for Life at gmail.com ydbt for life at gmail.com congratulations on winning the crank support the mfp crank support thousand dollar value so you could do whatever the hell you want with it you could sell it you could do whatever the fuck you want i don't care it's really up to you so get me a address verification of who you are send me a picture of your license i will use that as verification that you're you send it to a verified address and we'll get you the mfp crank support congratulations for winning i, I, I hate car trivia because someone's going to go, someone, you know what's going to happen? See, exactly. See, see, see what happens with car trivia? Shelby made that. Shelby made that. Shut the fuck up. You don't think, you don't think we all know that? Ford didn't make it. Shelby did. See, that's why I hate car trivia. But fuck you. Brandon is going to get it. And fuck, I hate, I'm never doing car trivia. That's the problem. It's too, you can poke holes in anything. Like if you were to say, <clears throat> okay, uh, let's, let's do it. Okay, when, let me see, when was the first, uh, hold on. Uh, 
what is the name? Um, hold on, I'm looking, I'm looking. Uh, huh. I'm trying to look because, okay, what were the engine codes for big block Chevys back in the day? Um, what were, what were the, he answered that before you even asked the question. Not sorry, the, the, we'll have to look up the timeline, but I, I wasn't going to like accept preemptive answers. Those of you that know Chevy really well, what, uh, what name designation did a lot of the big block Chevys have back in the sixties? Big block Chevys, AKA BBCs engine designation. Uh, AR, uh, no, but there was, wasn't, didn't, wasn't LT and LS used in LS6? Thank you very much. So what's an LS, LS6? No, no, no. I'm talking about, I'm talking about in the 60s. Like old shit. Like give, give me an engine, L88, LT5, LZ. Okay, so it's LZ. Now LS1 is 97. Uh, nitrogen and bias places LS6. I'm talking about in the 60s. LS6 engine? LS6 engine. Your, the, an LS6 comes up as a 5.7 liter um, LS6 engine in a, in like in a Corvette introduced in 1997. But I'm talking about in the 60s. Can anyone send me a link or anything like that? Because if I would have said, when was the first LS ever made? Right? Elva Galarga. So let's say the old 60s, the old, but how do I look it up? Like a Chevelle. Like L88, L79, LA, LB, L78. But were there any LSs back in the day? LS6 was a 454 on a Chevelle. Okay. LS6, 454, Chevelle. LS5, according to this. Okay, cool. Perfect. So let's look this up. And this is why I think car trivia is fucking stupid. So if I was to say, when was the first LS engine introduced? Well, y'all motherfuckers would have said 1997, right? But then I could have been like, uh-uh. They had an LS5, 454, 360 horse. Oh, but what the fuck? That's the problem with card trivia. There isn't like a solid, you know, foundational thing. They used 5 liter, Fox body. There was a 302. 302s were considered 4.9s. You ask a Chevy guy right now, what's a 5 liter? They'll say a 305. Every Chevy motherfucker will go, 305 is a 5 liter. Technically, you're correct. But motherfucker, it's like 4.993659. 302 is not a 5 liter. 302 is a 4.9. Oh, okay, so they're going to take the 50 emblem and put 4.9 in it. To be accurate, dickhead? Well, it's true. And then if I would have said, when did the first 5.0 came out? come out? <coughs> you guys would have said... Whenever the th first 305 would have came out. And technically, you would have been correct, asshole. That's why I think car questions are fucking stupid. Simpsons trivia is Simpsons trivia. The, the Star Trek The Next Generation is solid. This is what it is. There is no variance. Car shit is stupid. I hate it. LT has been on three different generations. Chevy small blocks. Might have to look up LS6. Big block I did. LS6 was the 454 option in the Chevelle. Right. So I'm just sick and tired of, you know, like trying to make car trivia when it can be poked, prodded, all this stuff. Like, did you know there was like one Boss 302 in like 1971? I saw that the other day. Boss 302, 1971. 19. Shit. Like, like Senior right now is drinking his old fashioned. He goes, no, there's not. So... One of one, so this is the problem, right? If I would have said, what was the last Boss 302? You would have been like, oh, 1960 something. But then I look at this fucking stupid article and it makes, you know, technically you'd be correct. One of one prototype 71 Boss 302. For most prototypes never make their way to private hands. This one did. It's odd to me that Ford would bother to go through all that kind of work, not to just crush the car, uh, blah, 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 blah. This is a 1971 for Boss 302, one of one. So if I would have done stupid shit and if I would have been like, hey, what's the last year of the Boss 302? You would have been like, well, you're 60 something. 
And I would have been like, actually, it's 1971 because one guy found it in some field and like looked up all the VINs and found out it was built on a special assembly line. Like, fuck all that. I, uh, there's a cat there. I don't know why there's a cat there. Like, f- I'm just sick and tired of car questions. They're stupid. Stupid. Dio Alex, would you end up putting a Roadrunner in the Gen 1? I don't think so. Like, find a Roadrunner. Actually, god damn it. That is- Driver mod? That is pretty good. That is... That's a really good question. Part farm. Part farm. Hey, part farm. If you come across a verified Boss 302 motor, hit me up. Because I don't want to do Gen 3 bottom end. I don't want to Gen... I want everything to be Gen 1 in this car. So if the motor blows up, I'd love to have a Boss 302 motor ready. That is the king motor. So parts form, if you come across a Boss 302 long block, I'll throw a crank sprocket, oil pump gears, stuff it in there. <clears throat> that sucker can take a thousand. Not a problem. Two, yeah, right, 2014. Right, e- e- exactly, Elva Galarga. You see what I mean? If I was to say when was the last Boss 302, you'd say 2014. And technically, you'd be right also. So you'd be right if you said 71. You'd be right if you said 69. You'd be right if you said 2014. I hate car questions gt500 update bent valves i don't know yet what do you need to do is trivia from your old videos so everyone will watch the videos and get the view count up alex forgot to access the parts farm for a second right i went oh my god so hey uh rob bowen by the way rob bowen you give me some money if you can get me a if you can oh someone's will fowler sent me something <laughs> yes exactly that's exactly what the GT500 looks like with um, mismatch front end. Like that's that's what that's what it looks like. This fucking bottom jaw, you know, Mikey bottom jaw. Stupid. Uh, K Kimmel, thank you for the money. Uh, Roadrunner isn't a Gen One. It's a King Daddy. Oh yeah. Any news of the GT500? No, sir. I have not heard anything, but I am not rushing that process because that's going to be a bill. So they can take their fucking time on that shit. Roadrunner Boss 2 is a bad bitch. Sancho got Alex thinking now with Roadrunner. Alex, what makes a Boss Motor special? Rods, pistons, crank. Rods, pistons, cranks, head. Cams, everything. Rods, pistons, crank, everything. The whole motherfucker. CNC heads. Better valves. Better cams. Better crank. Better rods, better pistons. Like everything. It's, it's, it's almost like an illuminator, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Boss 2 with the torque storm will make the back sp- <laughs> the earth spin backwards. How about Bumble Swipes trivia? If you blow up the Gen 1, would you do a piss in rods and no, I'd probably do a Boss 302 motor right away. S197 Boss 302 was 2012 to 13, no 14. Uh, you're wrong about that. They had a 14 Boss 302. Because all you have to do is type in 14 Boss 302, and it just shows up as right there. I'm looking at four of them. Here they are. I'm <laughs> there it is. A boss. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I think you're right. Correction. I think you're right. I think in 13, they're done. they were done. 12 and 13. I apologize. See? I'll correct myself. Because if you look up... Actually, let me see. 2014 Boss 302. Now, now I'm on that shit. Let's go to Carfax. 12, 13. 12, 13. Well, I don't see a 14. Wow. I think you're right. <clears throat> 12 and 13... Seem to be the only years for Boss 302s, no 14s. Interesting fact. I didn't know that until today. So, Parts Farm. That makes it even more special. They only made it two years. See, when we're gonna when we're old, old and crusty and our dick don't work and we're taking blue chews to potentially get our dick hard for our Asian girlfriend, I think you're going to look back on this time and go, man, those Boss 302 motors, they weren't coyotes. They were roadrunners. And them sons of bitches... Brett LaSalle went sixes in one of them. <laughs> you guys are going to be saying some dumb shit like that. <clears throat> yeah, 13. Uh, Kona Blue, 12 and 13, according to what I saw. 12, 13, boss. 14, nada. Exactly. 12 and 13, boss. 14, nada. Boss 302 was a two-year run. 302S is not really a boss. He's right. 14, boss 302S only. Again, see what I mean? You see what I mean? Now there's a thing called the boss 302S, boss. Boss, 302S. Let's see if that's a thing. See? So now, that's why I hate car trivia. Boss, 302S was a thing. 
It's so stupid. Yeah, a, a, a race version of a boss. It's just, again, so you're technically right also. That's why car trivia, I will never do again. It's so stupid, it's subjective, and you guys will fight me over a free fucking prize. 1230 had one year eye candy cane. The other had badass lights. 14 bosses who came with the first generation Gen 3 Coyote. Just kidding. Reef K. Reef K. I heard about another mode that you're, you're, that you're saying it in your shit. Alex, I've heard people say that the moment you spray nitrous, your motor's never the same. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. How much nitrous? It's subjective. What if you spray a, spray a 50 shot? All you're doing is atomizing the fucking fuel. So there's more... I'm not going to give you the chemical composition. But if you do a 50 shot, it's not going to hurt the motor. If you do a 150 shot, it's not going to hurt the motor. If you got enough octane, it's not going to hurt the motor. Stop it. Now, if you activate if you activate the nitrous right at um, 2,000 RPMs, oh, yeah. It's never going to be the same because it's going to die. <clears> 302 <throat> S is a damn race car. doesn't matter, Nightmare 1, because technically they're right. So you can't argue this shit. Now you understand why car trivia is so stupid to try to do. When was the first LS? 1997. Actually, 1968. Oh, come on, man. We're we're not talking that old guy shit. When was the first GT350 made? Oh, 2016. No, actually, there was a Fox Body GT350. Guys, there was a Fox Body GT350. Did you know that? Fox Body GT350. It was like the ugliest piece of shit. Candy cane, red and white piece of junk shit. It was ugly, ugly, and uh, it was the ugliest thing. It had 14, it had metric sized rims. Th- th- this thing, I think, were metric rims. Like, the, these are metric. Like, imagine you go put a 14 inch tire on it, and you somehow crowbar it on, and then you jack it, jack it, jack it, and then it explodes in your face because it's the wrong size. But this is a GT350 Fox body. Hideous ugly honeycomb nose gay stupid and you should be embarrassed to own and drive one it's not going to be a collector's item it's never going to be worth more than five thousand bucks shut the fuck up this thing's a piece of shit look at the motherfucker with these old school center lines holy shit sell it it sucks you're gay fuck you there you go and and, and that's what i think about that some guy right now you know (laughs) <laughs> and his double wide with his brand new 84 g350 out there with you know still in bubble wrap starts crying <clears throat> um 200 shot 87 octane for the win trx wheels 84 if i recall correctly for the fox body 350 and a 2011 350 yes that was a shelby abomination 11 gt350 was a shelby absolute abomination of a car the body kit was gay you were gay for liking it if you like it you're gay like it's ugly as shit it's stupid shut up this thing is hideous it's a piece of junk it's absolute trash there's nothing special about it at least a 16 350 had a 5.2 had a tremec 3160 or 30 whatever it is big brakes you know high revving this bitch was whack you're telling me this thing this thing has the same um dna as this you you you're gonna sit there and tell me with a straight face this hunk of shit has the same dna as this boy shut the fuck up with that noise i will not accept that on my show <clears throat> you also think about that cobra r 2002 <laughs> exactly they made a mustang 2 cobra also exactly 14s but i keep them clean right when was the first cobra made you would have been like uh 1993 actually 1994 or 95 i think the first cobra i'm sorry 93 and then you would have been like no 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 i remember the movie um spaceman or what the fuck was it What's that movie with the guy that had the little ball bearings and he 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 rescued a deer? <laughs> what's the movie? Oh, fuck. What's that? What's that movie? Movie where alien had ball bearings and saved a deer. <laughs> That's how I use Google. Star Starman. <laughs> See, you got to understand how Google works. Google works by you putting in stupidity. So I literally said, movie where alien has ball bearings and saved a deer. <laughs> so so the car in that movie was a cobra. See, <laughs> see he saved a deer. <laughs> so where's the car? Let me see where the car is. Uh, let me see. She had a cobra R. Let's look up Starman. Oh, not, not when I'm on that, Starman. Starman clip, clip. 
Oh, she, I can't even. I can't even spell. Starman clip, clip, and then boom, and then I'm seeing if there's a car. Eh, let's go. Starman movie car. Yeah, look at this. This was a Cobra two. So if if you like, Alex, you know uh, that was a 1978 Cobra two. I had one. So if I was to say, what was the first year the Cobra was introduced? You would be like, uh, the Shelby Cobra was made by Shelby. It wasn't made by Ford. So technically, it would be the 78 Cobra. But it was a Starman. He had ball bearings and he saved a deer. And I'm like, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do Simpsons trivia forever. Right. Well, that's Shelby. <laughs> Bryce and Witt. Alex, search history wild as fuck. Exactly. That's how you're supposed to use Google. You ask specific questions and it goes full retard. Um... Alex, that guy when driving screams. Alex, that guy's. Alex, that guy's when dry dying screams out. Erase my search history. No, I, I don't like Starman. It's like Starbucks, Streamyard, Starbase, and then this Bumble. Like uh, I don't. I'm not. I'm not hiding what the fuck I was. Uh, I was doing. Fuck all that. <laughs> I ain't got time for that fucking noise. Um, someone said uh, Mexicans here in Cali love them body kids with huge chrome knockoff rims. Bicep mode. Looks like a Maverick. Build a custom fuel system for the Gen 1 or pre-built. What the fuck do you think I'm going to do? A custom fuel system? What are you doing? What do you think I would do that? Why would I build a custom fuel system when I could just go, four innovations, level two. <laughs> custom fuel system. By the way, guys, do you think I'm going to keep this car forever? Do you think after I build it, after about a year or two of owning it, you don't think I'm just going to sell it as a probably a boss-motored, nine-second... Built transmission, built rear end, turnkey car you could drive anywhere and run fucking nines in it. Like It's not a long-term deal. Alex, type the letter in P right now and let us see. Okay, let me let me see. P? Okay, it's uh, Podbean, Patreon, Paramount Plus, Palm Bay Ford, Popeye's Chicken Donk, Bumble, and Podbean. I, I, sorry, I don't, I don't, I don't do Pornhub. Sorry, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry. You guys think that I like sit here and jerk off all day, literally, while I'm working? No, fuck no. DNA for fuel system level two, exactly. Simpsons, good. No Trek stuffs. Fuck you, Brian Brown. Fuck you. You know what? How dare you? I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put you on fucking timeout, motherfucker. Who the fuck do you think you are? How do I put it? Doesn't even let me put you in timeout. I want to put you in timeout right now. I want, I want, I want to get rid of you for 30 minutes, <laughs> but it doesn't let me. Prediction here you'll still sell the GT500 first. I hope so because that's a $55,000, $60,000 car. Absolutely. Uh, sell it to me. Uh, custom fuel system adds 100 horsepower to the wheels. Needs RD like the Homer. Google Channel trivia. What did Alex lift his car with to install his MDW shifter on the black car? What did I? Wow, that's an interesting one. I don't know. What did I lift it with? My most recent build was with a Ryobi. <laughs> Says Reef K. But if you call it custom, it's automatically better. Coming to Miami next week. What's the best Peruvian place that's not Ceviche? 105. Down there? I don't know. Miami's a fuck. I, I, Miami's a lot. I mean, it's great restaurants. And they have like 30 Peruvian places. So, honestly, go to fucking Yelp and check that shit out. This shit ain't Yelp. Um, it's on his phone. He told us back in 2019. He edges all day and uses his rage from the ticket system. I got you, says Brighton Wit. Bryson Wit. Star Trek has a soft spot in Alex. Exactly. Star Trek, fuck Star Wars. Star Wars is for fucking gays. Um, just joining. Can you start over, please? Says James Struther. The dino. Oh, no. See, but I didn't lift it with the dino. I drove it on the dino. So, see? The wording is wrong. How about you just choose a topic of trivia see who can find the, answer fa fa find the answer faster? How about micro record trivia? Gotta have some Star Trek. You lifted it with a floor jack and your pedal extender? No. He's gonna call your boss. Don't know, Ramp. You back it onto a dyno. His cab, says 313 Mike M. All right, guys. So today we talked about Gen 1 Auto Secured. I ha so far, I mean, everything's approved. I signed everything over today. A gray, and I don't know what they call that color. Um... It's not dark shadow gray. It's sterling gray, I think. Or sterling, yeah, sterling gray or whatever. Brembo package, Brembo brakes, fully loaded, 401A, leather, all the shit. And I'm going to get it here. Do some, you know, make sure everything's good. Make sure, put new plugs in it. Make sure, like, the car is mechanically sound. And obviously, it's going to eventually get NA stuff. Go to the track, baseline bone stock. Then put a tune in it. And then 
get a PMAS cold air, probably put it on at the track and see if it gains anything with the PMAS cold air. That'll be one video. Then we'll do ultimate headers. Then we'll do free flow and exhaust. We'll probably do a Magnaflow Street Adult Series cap back because I love those. And we'll probably do a drive shaft, go back out there, then do E85, go back out there, and then let's get a blower on it, converter, and tell it and tell Jake, let's get a transmission built because I know it's not gonna last long. I don't wanna kill the transmission by destroying the forward planetary. I don't think I'm gonna go 4R200 hub on this guy. 4R200 hub, in my opinion, is like a thousand and up horsepower situation. I don't want a three speed 6R80 in this thing. I want a six speed normal as it comes. And if I need to do some billet planetary stuff, I'll go ahead and do that also. And uh, we talked about shops selling you junk. Shops selling you something to get high margins on, making you think it's a quality product, but it's just a high margin product. And the LRX is making people that have never had tunes get tunes because now you see guys that have never had a tune order a tune via the LRX, starting a whole new wave of Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3 guys starting to tune their car because 24 is not tunable. So people are going backwards and buying older cars. And that's why I'm buying a Gen 1 so I can show you what one of them is capable of doing. Have a good rest of oh, Gene. Great name. Gene Gray. Could you imagine I call the car Gene Gray? Because it's gray. Anyway, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys on Thursday for YDBT Daily. We'll talk a little shit then. Give away some uh, paddle things from uh, CND Auto Tech. I'm sure he'll tell me the name. Actually, is there an actual name with this? Hold on. It's a clock spring kit. It's a clock spring kit. The gaugemount.com clock spring kit find installation instructions at the gauge mount.com clock spring kit so we'll be giving that away thursday and then a cool day air potentially on peasant check have a good rest of your night thank you for hanging out with me congratulations to the guy who won the mfp crank support send me an email and then we'll get back after it and giveaways and more bullshit talking back on thursday ydbt daily see you guys later bye